This is the graduation ceremony at Fudan University's law school, and a grad walks up and punches a professor in the face. Later, the student, his name is Xia Chengxi, he says that he hit the wrong guy and he apologizes. So he felt bad for hitting the wrong guy. He actually says he was supposed to hit the dean of law school. All right, I think I found the real chat here, guys. This is one punch man in China. And this isn't even the best part. He later posted after punching, says that he doesn't care if he gets 15 days in detention, and he's been trying to get expelled from the school. As I'm editing this video, I find out that he has been taken away by the police and he's actually, and the, the teacher that he did hit has ended up in the hospital. So I guess that was a really hard punch. Um, and uh, you cannot find any of this regarding this incident on Weibo right now about the Fudan graduation and punching. And uh, there's also security guards on site. So what an interesting development. Remember, he did say that he doesn't care if he gets taken away by the police and be, uh, gets put into the 15 day detention. He basically just says, screw the school, and says a bunch of swear words. So here's the reason why. Now, the student's reason for the punch is that he says the university has a bad and a corrupt learning environment, uh, a, a corrupt system and atmosphere, as well as a stench of officialdom. Now, he also says that he doesn't uh, want to attend the school because this was the wish of his family and parents. He did not personally want to be here. And so for his own case, he really had no reason to complete the study. And he's his really, you know, the hatred for this entire college was put into real action. Now, Fudan University is a breeding ground of Communist Party officials, and one of the most famous one is Wang Huning, who now serves as the ideological czar and uh, basically the, you know, the brainwork behind Xi Jinping. He, in his earlier days, he was a professor at Fudan University and then having graduated from there. And uh, this guy, Xia, he is a fourth year law school student and he's uh, rebelling against the system. Now, allegedly, this student is Taiwanese, and he is attending a school in Shanghai. And being a fourth year grad in law school, so afterwards, you don't have to attend law school. Uh, this is it. You can take the bar exam in China and become a lawyer if you wish to. Now, under normal circumstances, students that get in trouble for this type of stuff could potentially face a, a punishment either by the school or with the law enforcement. But after multiple tries of him trying to expel uh, to get expelled from the school, uh, as I said, his parents forced him to be here. The email he wrote to one of the course instructor, a professor, was that he apologized for writing swear words in the final exam answers. And then also at the same time before that, he tried to get into the exam room with his phone in his pocket so that he could be caught right with uh, cheating attempts uh, for, you know, trying to get expelled under the academic dishonesty sort of category so that he did, you know, he can be expelled from the school. But the professor and TAs talked him out of doing that. So basically, he had to answer uh, in another form, basically writing a bunch of swear words, you know, screw this, screw that, uh, F you, F that, in the actual paper. Uh, but he felt really bad to the professor of that course because that's, you know, in another department, it's in the language department. So he then wrote an email afterwards to apologize to the professor saying that, you know, this has nothing to do with you. It's me and the school and my family and the school. Uh, I just wanted, you know, to apologize for my behavior. So this guy seems like he's genuinely just wants to get out of this, this system, right? He also tried other stuff during the lockdown, according to chat messages, he would disobey lo uh, lockdown orders in the school. He would travel to Chengdu to, you know, have fun. And he also multiple times disobeyed things like mask rules, daily COVID testing rules. And uh, all of this really got people angry on, you know, all the teaching staff and the school uh, administrators, but they still have not expelled him yet. So basically this guy, he went to a corrupt school system doesn't want to be educated there because of, you know, against the principles that he described, which were corrupt. And then he tries multiple times to get expelled, does not work out. And guess what happens? Here's the best part, okay? He is now guaranteed on this list to go to Beijing University, one of the top universities in China, to study medical, uh, to, to be in the medical school as a master's student. So not only did he try to get in trouble and not work out, he is now going to be sent to Beijing University to become a doctor. Like, in, like what? So makes me wonder, you know, it says that he's from Taiwan. What does his family do to have such a, you know, power hold on the school to not be able to do anything to him? If this was a normal student, something would have happened to him, right? And that he's from Taiwan too. 
Uh, so very interesting. But of course, this is a very interesting way for him to protest against what he describes is corruption and a breeding ground of uh, officialdom, which we all understand is, you know, this is supposed to be the university for the pathway to communist leadership, which is supposed to be the best thing in China you can get, right? Becoming a communist official. And yet this guy doesn't agree with that. He writes a, you know, three, four page essay telling it how it is, how bad it is. And then they're still not, you know, doing anything to him. After disrespecting the school, the, the, the instructor he punched, the dean that he's supposed to punch, and then he gets to go to a high class school in China. All right, before we continue, let me do a short advertisement segment. These products help to sustain our channel and to keep us going. So if you're interested, make sure to check them out if they are for you. Now, these are Derma Rollers Intense Hyaluronic Acid Hydration Masks. They're made in Germany, and these are great for repairing your skin barrier as well as provide intense moisturization. And they're also great for reducing fine lines and aging problems on your skin. So these are great for all ages. And uh, if you have any female friends, uh, you know, family, wife, girlfriend, etc., make sure uh, if you're looking for a gift to consider these as well. I'll put the link in the description so you can check them out. All right, let's talk more about China, but it's going to get a little bit darker. So for all of these videos, because of YouTube's content policies, I'm going to put the link in the description as well as comments so you can check out the full video without censorship. Or if you would like to watch the version that doesn't have any blurring at all, I'll put that on Ganjin World. So you could uh, I'll again put the link in the description as well. All right, so this is another day in China, another indiscriminate attack happening. This happened in a subway station in Shanghai. Now, something's very wrong with China, and you still have people on the internet tweeting that Shanghai's beautiful skyline is what's supposed to represent China. And this just comes a week after four foreigners, Americans, were attacked in northern China. Again, another indiscriminate attack happening just one day after China announced that Australia can now travel to China visa-free. Uh, and they also announced that 144-hour transit visas are available for foreigners to come and quickly, you know, take a quick look at China and apparently you're supposed to see the real China. So they're offering all these options for foreigners to come, yet the number of foreigners coming to China is dwindling. Especially I think more won't be coming after hearing about the recent incidents. So this attack in Shanghai, which I believe now, I don't wish for any attacks to happen in any country around the world, but the reality is that these happen very often in China. They're often not talked about because the state media would rather focus on other things like hiding the fact that there are these uh, basically revenge against society um, cases where you really don't understand the motives. Even if they catch the suspect, they would never reveal the real uh, like motivation for doing something to you because obviously for stability reasons, they wouldn't do that. Uh, but if you go on Twitter, you can easily find just attacks like this all over China. Uh, so this is just the latest, right? What uh, Serpent ZA calls is a murder season in China. So I'm more angry at the fact that they claim China is still safe and completely ignore the fact that this type of events are happening. Now, you obviously think that, well, these attacks happen in America or somewhere else, you know? Yes, they do. And I'm not denying that fact. I'm just saying that those become big national news and they're actually talked about because that's something that's very horrific and it should be talked about. In China, you would never hear about these type of incidents. Now it's much better because people have phones and they can upload things to the internet so things get circulated without the state media. And the issue with China is that things are often hidden for two reasons. One is a voluntary effort by the government because it deals with stability. And the other one is that you often have people who just simply cannot care, not because they don't want to, but because once they do, they might get in trouble themselves. Like for example, in the subway situation here, if they try to intervene, what are the chances they also get hurt? Or if they you know, try to help one of the victims, there were cases of these elderly people in China falling uh, on the ground and somebody tries to help and then they started blaming that person who was trying to help, blaming them for causing the fall. So you have these situations, right? Where people kind of grown very distant, very afraid of contributing to a societal effort that they simply just says, you know, I'm better off keeping myself safe. And that's why in a lot of these incidents, the person that's involved gets away more uh, than what they should have gotten away with, you know, everywhere else. And so you have videos like this. Again, all the videos will be linked in the description if you want to check out the unblurred version or the uncensored version. And uh, they'll also be in the comment as well. So yeah, you just saw a policeman along with several other men just standing there watching this happening to this woman and they're not doing anything about it. 
what a great country. Awesome, my country. Now, China gets away with this in other ways because they employ a massive number of people to change the perception, to shift the narratives online. For example, uh, a nice viewer provided me with this study from 2017 that estimates about 2 million people in China are hired to do this work on social media, and their purpose is to write pseudonymous and basically deceptive comments online to try to blur it into a uh, how the real content of the story might become. And, uh, you know, these people, the purpose here is to blur the line, to shift the narrative, to try to change the perception about China through these online comments that act or disguise themselves as if they're real people from China. And so their purpose is to downplay stories like this one. This is eight women who froze in the back of a freezer truck on a 20 minute ride after work and it's recently happened. They all worked at a local beef pa uh, packing plant in this rural area and they make about 100 yuan or 13 US dollars for the eight hour shift. Uh, they often though work over time because for every hour they do, they get an additional 20 yuan per hour. So, and that's like less than $3. And so often they will come home around eight, nine, 10. It just depends on how many hours over time that they do work. And what they do is allegedly, this is not the first time they've taken this freezer truck as a form of transportation. They all get dropped off at a gas station nearby and then everybody kind of disperses and go home. Uh, so what happened this time, according to the police and the investigation, is that there were sort of a dry ice leak, uh, potentially something to do with oxygen as well. But you got to think about the story behind it. You know, in what case do they really have to rely on this for transportation? Um, you know, these people, they're trying to save money. You know, the, the precious amount that they made, like $13 or $15 US or, you know, a hundred something uh, yuan, which is not a lot of money in China. You know, to save money on transportation after work, they decide to take this method instead, and that's how they meet their end. And that's just so sad. And it really represents what some officials in China call the low end population or the bottom class in China migrant workers, low wage workers, rural area population. These people are fighting over the smallest amount of gains or for, for the reasons of survival, of course. Um, but this really brings out the worst of humanity and the worst of the Chinese society. And elsewhere, you have this type of situation. This is a woman in China driving a delivery truck with her newborns in the passenger seat. She has to get out to lift all the crates herself to do the delivery. She also has to, you know, do the feeding and trying to eat whenever she can, all the while looking after the, her two kids who are still in the car. And that's, you know, a very sad situation in China. And then you have situations like this, where you have a newlywed couple taking wedding photos by the river, and then elsewhere in the distance, they're fishing for something, if you know what I mean. And then there's just like a clear contrast of the massive discrepancy of, of happiness or of just social status in China. And I think it's a perfect representation of what they're calling socialism, communism, and their so the apparent success of these ideologies. In a country of 1 billion people, uh, you see the huge discrepancy, like what happened here? Now, in this people versus people environment, the CCP claims they allegedly erased all of the discrepancies and that everybody's living happily after, at least according to those CCP spam bots that are living uh, really well. You have videos like this, which clearly show that's not the case. This is a police just attacking the woman who was on an electric scooter and her son is just crying helplessly on the side, like watching her mother going through this. And similarly, you have another police stopping e-scooter who now this time is a dad with her, with his uh, two children. And then you see, you know, he's like driving away here now. He's like, just take my kids. And he's like, I'll go to the detention center. And then you also have this young kid who was getting his own scooter confiscated. And he's on his knees begging the police here twice to get it back. And then you have this video here, a girl holding a sign for her price for the night. She's, you know, openly now doing this. Uh, these type of scenarios I talked about in my last video on young people in China, and they're very common. A lot of these girls, they have no jobs after graduation, so they either go into streaming or they do this type of work uh, because they're forced to. There's no other ways to make money now in China. And then many other videos, you see these like window girls or you see just streets full of these type of like door girls that are just waiting for business here. So the overall frustration we see in China with the society is at an all time high. It manifests in the forms of indiscriminate attacks or simply, you know, people trying to survive uh, or that just a, an oppressive state in which the police is attacking people for very small things 
A lot of these are small stories on their own, but when you piece them together, you really see a bigger picture, which is that people in China are very miserable and they're frustrated. And some of them decide to vent out their frustration in very bad ways. And uh, that's really the state of China today. All right, that's it today for the episode explaining why uh, there's one punch man in China as well as some of the darker stuff happening. If you enjoy the content, leave a like, comment, leave your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, bye-bye.